The upstress function can be utilized to eliminate the issuing of duplicate actions when the same triggering event occurs many times within a defined time interval. This type of logic, referred to as threshold automation, is common logic primarily performed while processing system message events as they can be reissued many times within a short time frame. This function lets you easily create threshold automation logic at the event level against the ACID that issued the event or for a specific criteria that is within the triggering event. For example, you may need to perform this threshold logic against all IEF450I ABEND events that are being produced on the system, against the ACID that produced the ABEND event, or against some particular text within the ABEND, such as a specific ABEND code. The function will store and return an internal count of the number of times that the specified threshold type has occurred within a defined interval time. This function eliminates the need of creating and maintaining complicated logic that keeps track of the fire count, fire times, and firing address space within OpsMBS global variables. The function is available to AOF rules, specifically message rules. Let's look at the general coding syntax for the OpStress function. A user-defined simple variable name or var name is needed to call or invoke the function. The threshold type is the first required argument to the function. It defines the scope of the threshold. Currently there are three values for the threshold type. An E value to indicate the threshold is checked against the event ID that triggered the rule. An A value to check against the ACID that triggered the rule. And a C value to indicate that the threshold is based on some unique text string within the triggering event. The second required argument to the function is the interval which sets the max time in seconds in which the specified type is to be checked. The last arguments to the opstress function are the criteria operands which identify a specific string within the event that is to be used as a threshold check, including the line of the message in which the string occurs if an MLWTO message is being processed. Before we look at some usages of the opstress function within rules, Let's take a look at these specific IEF450I ABEND events that are filtered from the OPS log to get a better understanding of determining the scope of the threshold that is being desired within your rule logic. If the desired logic of these ABEND events is to do some action, such as sending a system alert or an email, based on the total number of ABENDs issued within some defined time frame, then a threshold scope of E would be utilized. If an ops threat statement like the first one shown in this slide was coded within a message rule to fire on this ABEND event, the ops thresh would store and return the total number of all ABENDs that have occurred in a 10 minute or 600 second interval. Looking at the time frame of these filtered messages, you'll see that there are 9 ABENDs all within a 10 minute window. Thus, upon the first firing of the rule triggered by the first ABEND approximately at 9 o'clock, the function would have returned a value of 1 while a value of 9 would have been returned when the last IEF450I event at the 9.06.28 second time frame was issued, since there were a total number of 9 advents up to that point that occurred in a 10 minute window. The counter would be reset upon an event being processed after the 10 minute interval from the first occurrence. So if the next advent message on the system was issued at 9.15, the counter would be reset to 1, since it has been more than 10 minutes since the threshold was set upon the very first issuing of the event at 9 o'clock. If the desired logic of this ABEND event is to do some action based on the number of times a particular ACID or job has ABEND, then a threshold of A would be utilized. If an ops thresh statement like the second one shown in this slide was coded within the message rule, the function would store and return the total number of ABEND messages that have been issued by the specific ACID or job name of the event that occurred in a 10 minute window. Looking at the time frame of these filtered messages again, and the job name from which the event was issued, the very first firing of the rule triggered by job name MSZ1030P, the function would have returned a value of 1, since this job has only issued one ABEND. The second issuance of the IEF450I event at 90127 would have also caused the function to return a 1 since this TSC pound sign COB job name has only one app end in this time frame. However, in the third issuing of the IF450I event, also from the job TST pound sign COB, the return value from this function would now return a 2 
since this is the second advent from this particular ACID within this 10 minute window. The ACID type of threshold event, of course, allows you to create a more specific threshold check when you need to do some logic based on the ACID that triggered the event. The last sample op stress station coded in this slide is demonstrating how to create a threshold check based on some particular string within the triggering event. Suppose the logic of this rule was to only do some action based on an SOC6 or a SOC6 advent occurring within a 10 minute window. As this statement shows, a value of C defines that a criteria specific threshold is to be checked and the value or string is defined in the last argument of the function, which in this case is the SOC6 or SOC6. So using these same filtered message events from the ops log, upon the last advent message issued at 9.06.28, this SOC6 criteria threshold would have returned a value of 2 since only two SOC 6 advents were issued in a 10 minute interval. Now let's take a look at a few coding examples taken from some OpsMVS automated applications. This particular code is utilizing the function to set an ACID specific threshold against CICS configuration file read failures. The function is set up to not take action until five of these events has occurred from a specific CICS region within a 30 minute or 1800 second time interval. Note the A threshold type is defined on the function statement along with a time interval of 1800 seconds. The function will return the current count of this threshold to the thresh count variable and its value will then be queried. If the desired count of 5 has been met for this threshold, an alert banner will be generated indicating that a read failure has occurred for the specific CICS region in which the ACID threshold was set against. Looking at these filtered events from within the ops log, You'll see that CICS region, CICS US70, has issued five of these events, all within a defined 30 minute window. Thus, after the fifth issuance of this event at 11.21.27, this rule would have generated an alert message indicating that that CICS region is having failures. Any subsequent issuances of this event from the CICS region will cause this rule logic to not process until 30 minutes have passed from the first event set at 11.03.14, as to which the counter will be reset. From this OBS log filter, no alert message would have been issued at this point for the CICS US69 CICS region because only three events have occurred currently within this 30 minute window. This rule will utilize the op stress function to cause the logic to only process the first occurrence in a 10 minute window of each unique CICS connection ID from within a specific CICS region. As seen in the filtered ops log window, this DSNP 002i event is a five line MLWTO and the unique connection ID that is to be used as a threshold is located on the fourth line of the MLWTO. Note the event specifier in the first line of the rule indicating that the DSNP 002i event is an MLWTO message. The initial logic of the rule will parse the specific connection ID from the fourth line of the message, which will be contained in the message.txt.4 environment of variable. This connection ID variable will then be used within the criteria operands of the ACID threshold type. Zeroing in on this op stress syntax, an ACID specific threshold is defined as this is to be checked against each issuing CICS region along with a 10 minute window interval. Criteria operands that define the extracted connection ID that is to be matched along with the starting position and line number that is to be located. From the extracted ops log, the connection ID of DB2CALL located in the fourth line of the MLWTO starting at position 26, will be used as the text string for this criteria. Assuming this was the first occurrence, the desired automation determined by checking if the thresh count variable is set to 1 would have been triggered. Similar to the last sample, this ops thresh function sets a criteria threshold type on the IEC 606i VTOC errors that can be generated by any DASDE volume. The specific logic of this rule will fire upon the first issuance of an IEC 606i issued for a unique DASDE volume if issued multiple times within a 15 minute window. Looking at the filtered errors in the ops log window, three different jobs caused the issuance of this error for the same 221 FOX volume within a few seconds of each other. 
the OPSTRASH coded in this triggering rule would have ensured that the logic to run this ICK DSF utility program only happened once in this 15 minute window. Various sample OPSMVS AOF rules can be viewed from more OPSTRASH coding examples as well as provide you with a syntax template that can be copied as you create your OPSMVS automation and the logic warrants utilizing this OPSTRASH function. Locate your installation's CCLX OELS OPSMVS dataset to access these members that are shown. Thank you for viewing this video. For more detailed information about the OPSMVS OPSTRESS function and the complete OPSMVS product, click the information bubble in the top right corner to load the product page. From there, you can go to the product documentation, visit the CA communities, or see the learning path.